year for the Australian Leadership Project. We were joined by Philip Dalladakis, the Victorian Minister for Small Business, Innovation and Trade, who shared his wisdom and insights into Australian leadership, its finest stories and its challenges. Um, Philip, uh, what do you see as the unique qualities of Australian leadership? Well, I think, uh, I think it's a great question. And I think one of the things that has Australian leaders standing a little bit out, I guess, from others is our self-deprecating humour. I think that we take the issues seriously, but we don't necessarily take ourselves seriously, and I think that's a great way to be. Philip, what do Australians want of their leaders? You know, I think that's evolved, which is not a surprise, because I think that society has evolved over a long period of time. And I think, you know, the, the saying that everything old is new again, I think people want genuine discourse. They want to be, have, I guess they want to have a conversation. They don't want to be talked at. Uh, and they want to be treated with respect. So if something's difficult, they want you to tell them it's difficult. If something is not doable, tell them. And this is why. I think the days of trying to say one thing and mean another in politics are over. And I think that that's not necessarily a bad thing either. So, Philip, what are your favourite stories of Australian leadership? Well, I've got a few. Uh, I think back to the tragic days of the Bali bombings, uh, the unheralded uh, work by Tony Abbott, which for a long time was not talked about publicly. Uh, the people weren't aware of what he did, uh, what other Australians did in responding to, obviously, the tragedy at the time. I think that's an indication of what we're looking for in leaders. Now... Tony uh, had a lot of problems when he was Prime Minister and they're well documented and I'm not here to, to relive them. But I think that's what people look for in, in leaders, the ability to be selfless and to jump in and, and help out and, and do what they can. And the guy over my right shoulder, the current Premier Daniel Andrews, uh, again, I think his decision to undertake a Royal Commission into family violence, that's the kind of leadership that inspires me to be a Member of Parliament and, and to be proud to be a Minister in a government that uh, Daniel leads. Because what Daniel did at the time wasn't just take on a policy issue that needed to be confronted, but uh, Victor, as you well know, uh, he committed to adopting all of the recommendations of the Royal Commission sight unseen. And in politics, to accept a recommendation that you are not aware of or not, uh, not across before it gets made is pretty frightening at times. But Daniel understood that this is something that we just needed to do and we couldn't afford not to do it. And so that's also the kind of leadership that, as I said, inspires me. Philip, as the Innovation Minister, you're getting to see a lot of young, vibrant um, leaders in tech and small business. Um, who are the ones that, that inspire you? What are some of the great stories you're seeing as Minister? Yeah, look... Uh, I come across them all the time. Uh, just last night, uh, I was at an awards ceremony within the tech industry, and Emily McGuire uh, was presented with the opportunity, uh, an award winner of the awards last year, in fact, and spoke of her role in the Domestic uh, Violence Association uh, and how they had developed an app to support women in domestic violence situations. Uh, a non-threatening way for women to be able to secure their futures and the futures and safety of their children. So I find that incredibly uh, inspiring. Uh, but then within the private sector, of course, there are people that are wanting to have a go. And whenever I get to San Francisco, and, and of course you've spent some time there as well, I find that incredibly inspiring. People that are successful there, they don't take their money, stick it in a bank, and sip a pina colada on a beach for the rest of their lives, they reinvest, they have another go, they find another company, uh, and they keep doing it because they love what they do. And so for me, that's what inspires me to continue in my role here in Victoria, to be able to change the culture, kill the tall poppy syndrome, right? Enough of the tall poppy syndrome. It's okay when people are successful to get on the top of their chairs or to have what I call the dead poet society moment where they get onto the top of the table and they yell from their lungs, that's okay. 
because it's hard to get that success. It's hard to get to the top. So it's important that they get the opportunity to pat themselves on the back and be grateful for the ride because plenty of them will fail. Failure is part of the journey. Failure is not a destination in and of itself. So what we need to do is we need to support those people that try and make a difference, that try and create value, that try and see an opportunity to take advantage of it. We need to help them along the way and say, if you fall, it's okay, get yourself up, dust yourself off and have another go. Because what we need to do to be able to encourage those people coming through is to show them that success is all right in society. And so if we can kill the tall poppy syndrome, then we as a society will be much better off. So Philip, you're, you're a minister now. Um, how do you find both the challenges and the opportunities of being a leader in politics in Australia today? It's challenging. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, the competition of ideas, the derision of uh, public policy. I think that the, the depth and breadth of debate has escalated in a way that is not only unhelpful, but also challenging to be able to have such discussion. Uh, you know, I can tell you in my short time in Parliament, some two and a half years, uh, security have had to be engaged from Parliament House and Victoria Police have had to be uh, sought advice from a number of times. And we've seen that around the world, that there's an escalation of debate in ways that I don't think is appropriate in public discourse. The tension, the tone has to be lowered. Uh, people need to be able to have the right to express themselves, whether you or I would agree or disagree with those views. It has to be done in a respectful and a tolerant way. Uh, because the alternative is what we've recently seen in America, whereby uh, the chief whip, I think it was, for the Republican Party in the Congress uh, was shot at by somebody who uh, took great exception to obviously the Trump administration. When the depth of uh, conversation reaches a level whereby people that may be suffering from mental illness but otherwise think that that's okay, we need to take a step back and think that maybe, just maybe, that we're also part of the problem and we have to de-escalate. Well, a huge thank you to Philip Daladakis for sharing his time and his wisdom with the Australian Leadership Project. If you'd like to share your stories, or read other people's stories, please go to our website at www.australianleadership.com and please feel free to share those stories with your friends and colleagues.